Hey gang, Jackalair here. Today we're taking a look at the games that come with the PlayStation Classic and how I feel about them. Before we start looking at them, I would like to point out that 9 out of the 20 games are PAL versions. What that means is that they move at 50 hertz instead of 60 hertz, and that makes them feel sluggish to me. Let's get into the games. Battle Arena Toshinden. Originally released the year that I graduated high school, this fighting game was promoted as the Saturn Killer, but I'm pretty sure Sega did that all on its own. This game is the first 3D weapons-based fighter, so it has historical significance. But the games that came after this one are more appealing to me. Cool Borders 2. There was a time when snowboarding games were amazing and were the pinnacle of technology. That time has passed, and I find Cool Borders games in thrift shops all the time. Destruction Derby. This is one of the games I had the most fun with on the PlayStation Classic. As a racing game with multiple modes and a really interesting damage system, I think it holds up and is a great entry on this console. Final Fantasy VII. This game was mind-blowing. And while it looks bad by modern standards, this game still has the ability to grab me, and I wanted to sit here and play more of it. Uh, this is a great choice to include so people can play it before part one of the remake comes out. Grand Theft Auto. I never liked this game. I hate the controls, and my thoughts on it have not changed. Intelligent Cube. This puzzle game is very weird, and I will admit that I lost a fair amount of time playing it over the week. You basically try and remove rolling blocks by setting up traps and then setting them off while the block gets above them. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping Flash. There's an exclamation point, so I have to say it that way. Whoever made this needs to be placed in the pantheon of true artists. This is a first-person platformer starring a robot rabbit named Robbit. The plot is bonkers. As someone who stole parts of the, the world that Robbit comes from, and he wants to take them all and keep them for himself, or something. I don't know, it's weird. And awesome. Metal Gear Solid. There is no manual, there is no back of the box, there is no rumble. Without those three things, this game is pointless. Mr. Driller. This is a puzzle game that makes my brain hurt. You drill down and try and match colors, trying not to be crushed, and staying alive with enough air. 
Or at least I think that's what I would do. Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. This game has a lot of respect for me, but I never want to play it again. It's a style of game that seemed really hot for like three years and then vanished. And it's hard for me to go back and try and play it. Rayman. This game is still great. It is animated well and platforming at its finest. If you want to see where Rayman all started, play this game. Resident Evil Director's Cut. I can't stop laughing playing this game. The voice acting is so cringe-inducing that I can't take it seriously at all. It's a lot of fun, though. What? What is this? What is it? Blood. Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Revelations Persona. This game scares me. I want to play it all the way through, but I don't think I'll ever have that kind of time again. Being an adult sucks. Excellent. There are not many who know their own identity when they have come to this point. It seems you have passed the first test. By the way, have you noticed you carry more than one you in yourself? R4 Ridge Racer Type 4. Still a great game. I feel that this was probably the pinnacle of racing games on the PlayStation 1, but there might be some ones that I'm forgetting. Ridge Racer, though, is just... the standard. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. This game just makes me want to play Tetris. Siphon Filter. I love this game. The Siphon Filter series is one that I am so sad has stopped getting made. It's been over 10 years since we've had a game in this series. Tekken 3. Probably the Tekken game that I spent the most time playing, and this game still looks and plays great. Except for the fact that it's a little sluggish due to being the 50Hz PAL version. Maybe the 60Hz version would work just a little better. Round two. Fight. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Think of this as a very old version of Rainbow Six Siege. If you die a lot in that game, you'll die even more in this one. Like me. <laughs> Twisted Metal. This may hurt some people, but I feel the same about Twisted Metal as I do with some of the other games on this list. Sure, the first game is historical, but the follow-ups were better. This game just does not work for me. Wild Arms. This might be the game that people skipped more than any other, and that's a shame, as this JRPG is pretty great. It does just enough different to be interesting, but does enough standard stuff to not feel daunting.
And there you have it. My thoughts on the 20 games that are on the PlayStation Classic. I feel a handful are great to play, but the majority of them need some help. If you feel the same way, uh, then join me here in part three, where I'll show you how to get your own selection of PS1 games on here. Until then, thank you for watching, and as always, play on!